Hello, everyone. Hi. How's it going? It's going well. I see you, Della. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Can you Della. see everyone else? No, I don't. You, you'll have to, or if you're on a phone, you'll have to scroll through. I'm on my iPad. Oh, okay. Sounds good. Well, welcome everyone to our August 24th Family Health Forum. I'm going to give it just a few more minutes to allow people to trickle in. Um, but in the meantime, if you would like to put in your chat, in the chat box where you're from and uh, what team you represent and maybe one thing you're excited to learn about, we'd love to, to hear that. So just take a minute or two to do that. You know who I am, do Della, don't you? Yeah, of course, Lizzie. Well, me. And I know you too, Andrew. I know, um, I know, I know you're on the yeah. <laughs> where do we put the chat? Oh, here, chat. Yes. Here. Okay. While we're letting people come in, I'm just going to keep everyone muted. And then if you have a question, you can unmute yourself. All right, we have Deanna from Clark County, Andrew from Redmond. Who else do we have? Leah from Seattle, Amanda from NorCal, welcome Amanda. Great. We'll let those trickle in. I forgot that Leah was the was the person who organized this, and I thought it was like a different Leah that I know from <laughs> Seattle. And I was like scanning everyone's faces. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I only. I don't know. It. I don't. I've not met a Leah in Seattle. Not yet. Okay, we have Tyler from Marysville. Lizzie from Seattle, Wesley from Seattle, who's one of our panelists tonight, Christina from Seattle, Claire from Seattle. Cool. So we have a big representation on the west side of the state, but we do have some athletes from all around and um, some guests from other parts of the U.S. So very exciting. Um, I don't see anyone else in the waiting room, so I think we can go ahead and get started. Um, I'm just going to go through a few different housekeeping items uh, to get us all on the same page before we start this awesome conversation. Um, so, of course, you can use the chat, which now you have uh, used it to introduce yourself. So you can use the chat if you have questions for our panelists or if you have any technical difficulties, um, you can type those questions into the chat. If you are a Zoom expert, there's also an option to do a little virtual raise hand. Um, so if you wanna try your luck at that, you can do that as well. Um, all right, now I'm going to flip to our agenda. So today we're going to do um, introductions. We're gonna allow our panelists to introduce themselves. Um, we'll have a their presentation and then uh, Q&A at the end. Um, but of course, we want this to be more of a, of a conversation. So at any point, if you have questions, put those in the chat and um, Leah will help get those answered either during the presentation or afterwards. And we'll follow up with some Special Olympics Washington resources um, and also resources that the Ark of King County has provided for us. And uh, you will be muted during the, the presentations. Um, but again, if you have questions, you can use the chat box. Um, and we will also do a quick poll um, after the panelists introduce themselves. So get excited for that. So I'd love to introduce our panel for today. Um, we have Claire, Michelle, and Wesley. And although I would love to introduce them, I think they would do a much better job introducing themselves. Um, so Claire, would you like to get us started? Sure. 
Um, so my name is Claire and I work at the Ark of King County, which is in Seattle, Washington. And I think a lot of you live near Seattle or in Seattle. Um, so what I do at the Ark is I manage our healthy relationships program. And what that means is Wesley, who works with me, we go around to different schools, um, transition programs. So we usually teach 18 to 21 year olds, if some of you have been through transition before. We work with transition students to teach them about how to be safe and healthy in their relationships. So we teach people about like saying no to stuff that's, that they don't like. We teach people about dating. We teach people about um, just how to have like relationships that make them feel happy um, and relationships that feel good. Um, and I guess I just want to say that um, my cat is being kind of noisy in the background and so I'll be muted when I'm not talking but I just apologize if there's any like loud meowing sounds um that's that's my fault um yeah. is there anything else that you want to hear uh, about me um Della or Leah is there anything okay cool. I'll okay. you did a great job thank you <laughs> all right Michelle how about you Hi, I'm Michelle, and I'm from the Lewiston-Clarkston area over on the um, southeast region. I'm an athlete, and um, I started with Special Olympics back in 20, 2009, because I went, and, um, but yeah, I just am here if anybody has any questions, and I basically um, have autism, and so, um, yeah. I'm basically here to help if anybody with any questions or anything. Thank you, Michelle. And Michelle just competed in our virtual summer games and was a social media advocate, weren't you? Yes, I was. Mm hmm. So you're going you to might have seen some awesome videos out there. Yeah. Yep. They'll we'll have some, some very valuable um, things to contribute to this conversation. So thank you so much for, for taking the time to be with us tonight, Michelle. No problem. And last but not least, we have Wesley. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Wesley. I also work with Claire at the Arc of King County, teaching folks about healthy relationships. Um, I am autistic, as I've noticed several of you are in the chat cool. I'm excited that there's uh, some other folks here uh, tonight. Um, and yeah, I also live in Seattle, but I am a more recent transplant. I've only lived in Seattle for a couple years, so. Awesome. Thanks, Wesley. Um, and now, of course, Leah and I, I forgot to introduce ourselves. Um, but my name is Della Norton. I'm the Director of Health Programs at Special Olympics Washington. Um, and I am excited that this is our second Family Health Forum that we get to share in a virtual environment with all of you tonight. And hi everyone, my name is Leah Schaffner. I am the Initiatives Manager at Special Olympics Washington, which means that I oversee our family support and our athlete leadership programs. Um, and I'm so glad that you're here. It's really nice to see you and looking forward to learning a little bit more this evening. Awesome. All right, so now we're going to do a quick poll. Um, an internet safety check-in. So it's just a couple questions and we'd love to hear about how you are using the internet. Do we see the poll questions? Great. Awesome. We've got seven out of 10. I think that's about everyone. Um, will you give me a little wave in, the, in your video if you're still working on the questions? All right. Looks like we're all good. I'm going to show the results so we can all learn a little bit more about each other. Um, so most people feel like they can make safe choices online, which is great. A couple are unsure. 
also great. We're going to learn more today. Um, and in which ways are we using so? In which ways are we using the internet? Um, we have social media, chat features, video calling, email. So most people are using all of those, and a few are using um, a different type. So thank you all for taking the time to do that poll. All right, without further ado, I'd love to pass the mic over to our friends at the Ark of King County um, to take it away. Awesome. So uh, there's sort of two topics that we were going to cover, and they're pretty related. So the first one is privacy, um, and the other one is internet safety. So during COVID-19, I, I feel like there's been some big shifts in how our relationships are and how um, our lives are. And when Claire and I were asked to come talk to you all, we were thinking about what are like the big differences um, in terms of like what healthy relationships look like and like what are we getting asked a lot by people. And we thought that privacy and internet safety would be good topics because people, lots of people have been asking us about them. Okay, next. Okay. Oops. Go, Claire? Yeah. Okay, uh, so the first topic we're going to talk about is privacy. You can go to the next slide. So, yeah, oh, I see that um, Christina says in the chat that privacy is a big one for you, and um, I'm glad we get to talk about it. Uh, if you have questions while we're talking, I would love to hear them. So um, people with intellectual and developmental disabilities often have less privacy. Um, sometimes that's because there are like more staff in our lives or we have more like care needs or support needs. Um, some people with disabilities need help like doing activities that for a lot of people are very private, like using the bathroom or changing clothes. Um, and so that can like contribute to a feeling of having less privacy in general. Um, but also during COVID there's less privacy because most of us are staying in our houses with our family members or other people who are living in our home all the time. So, and a lot of, a lot of people both with and without disabilities have lost their jobs or their school is canceled or all the activities that they were doing at their job that was not in the house or at like stuff like Special Olympics that was not in the house is like in the community is not happening like in your home or near your home with the same sort of family members or roommates that you are with all the time. And so it can feel like you like it can feel like you're like losing independence and that you aren't able to get away from the um, the like family members or roommates that you're living with. And that can make having a sense of privacy and independence really um, challenging. And then also if you're worried about things like your job, your health, um, maybe if you don't, if you've lost your job, you're worried about housing or your access to benefits, like all those things can like add a lot of stress. And so, yeah, you can go to the next slide. Can I check in here and just kind of ask? Yeah, go, go ahead. Can we go back to the last slide? I just want to ask a little bit. If, do, um, do people feel like this is true for them? Like, I wonder if you want to like give a thumbs up on your screen or if you want to type in the chat box. Um, do you feel like you've, it's been harder to have privacy over the past six months since we've all been at home? What do folks think about that? Like, for example, um, I used to have a bunch of roommates and when I would talk on the phone, I felt like it was a lot harder to make sure that nobody could hear me when I was talking on the phone. Or if I wanted to like watch something on my computer screen and I kind of wanted to be alone while I did it, it was a lot harder to be alone because like everyone is home all the time. So yeah, Christine is saying yes and I see Michelle nodding. Yeah, and so I think that's just, that's one thing that Wesley was talking about the other thing is a lot of us have had our routines change. So we haven't been able to do Special Olympics. We haven't been able to go to our jobs. Have, have other people kind of felt more stressed out this year because they haven't been able to do the things that they normally do? 
Does that like, I don't know if, if anyone else feels that way. Cool. Okay, I just wanted to kind of ask what people felt about that. You can keep going, Wesley. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Okay. So the like one of the, the things that like is really important about a sense of privacy is it increases your sense of freedom and your sense of agency. Um, and agency is the ability to make choices and like do the things you want to do. Um, and then it decreases conflict and like burnout with caregivers. So like if you never feel like you get alone time, you never feel like you can like have space for yourself, like then you might have like more, like you might get in a, more fights with your roommates or your family members um, and they might be more frustrated and you might be more frustrated. Um, and so if you can figure out how to find some time to have privacy, even when we're all stuck inside, that's great. Cause like, at least for me, I feel like less trapped in my house and more like, um, I still get to like make choices and have freedom when I get some time alone. I would love to hear from, from folks also about this, kind of like how Claire asked about the last slide. Does any, has anyone had experiences like this where you have felt that like being alone is really helpful for you or like having privacy is really helpful for you during COVID and quarantine? Or any like experiences where you're like, oh my goodness, if I have to spend one more minute with this person who lives with me, I'm like going to, I don't know, move to Siberia or something. <laughs> Christina said something in the chat um, about like how how are families protecting their kids. Christina, um, do you want to say anything more about that? You're on mute. Oh. If you press your space bar, we'll be able to hear you talk. There you go. Okay. Thank you. Well, there are times where families like to protect their kids. Yeah. And, and they're afraid that hackers might hack into their computers. Mm -hmm. And so basically, I, I feel for the parents and for the athletes on top of that. What yeah, I'm, sorry. I'm so glad that you brought that up because I think a lot of what we're talking about today is that tension between parents wanting to protect their kids and everybody wanting to keep all of us safe and then balancing the importance of that with the importance of being able to have privacy and like have your own choices. Um, I think something that we hear um, from a lot of um, the people with disabilities that we work with is that like if you're suddenly spending all this time at home with your family again, it can, you can kind of start to feel like maybe you're being treated like a little kid or maybe you just don't feel like you, you get to have as much like choice and you don't get to have as much independence as you used to. Um, so I'm really glad that you brought that up because I think that that's really important and that's what we're talking about. And we also think it's really important for everybody to have like freedom and choices and stuff. Um, yeah, does that make sense to you, Christina, the way I said that? Um, yes, and another thing is, is that what really kind of irks me is that I was treated like a normal kid, and um, basically, like, it's the, it's the labeling. Why are they labeling people with disabilities? How do you diminish that? all those labels that's labeling everyone else when they want to be treated like a normal kid. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that with us, Christina. Because my parents treat me like a normal kid. They don't talk down on me or anything. I love my parents. They support, they support me and the caregivers and everyone else like across the world are protecting the people in their area too it's the same thing as parents doing
doing the same thing for their own kids. So how can we be able to um, get that out there? Totally. We're going to talk more about that after we talk about this privacy piece. We're going to talk more about like how to be safe and how to kind of protect people. So I want you to kind of hold on to that because we're going to get there. Um, but I'm really glad that you brought that up. And yeah, I do think that like all of us just want to be treated like um, adults because all of us in this chat or all of us in this video group are adults. And so I'm really glad that you brought that up. Thank you. Yeah. Does anyone feel, so one of the things on this slide is sort of um, that when we don't have as much privacy, when we're all stuck at home together, it can make us have more like arguments with like our family members or arguments with our roommates. So you don't have to answer if you don't want to, but does anyone feel like they've just been more like irritable or they've gotten into more disagreements with, with people since COVID? Michelle, you kind of raised your hand. Tyler, I see. Do you want to share, Michelle? Yeah, mine is um, basically I have been a lot more irritable because I've had issues with my mother this whole time because she's been not treating me the right way. And so um, it's definitely, she's been treating me totally different and been like the, to the point to where she's treating me like I'm, an, I'm basically nothing because she's used, and the weird thing is she is a special ed teacher. So she's treating me different than she's treating everybody else in my family. So yeah, I, and I live by myself, thank heavens. <laughs> I've also had issues with a roommate before. So yeah, I've had issues with that too, with the whole family members and stuff. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Um, Leah, you said that you have two roommates and you can definitely get on each other's nerves. Yeah, I was finding that that um, yeah, that that just for me personally, I um had roommates for most of this year. And yeah, we found that suddenly when none of us were going, leaving our house to do anything anymore, all of a sudden it felt like we were like living on top of each other a lot more. Um, and so I feel like even not just parents, but like siblings, roommates. Um, yeah. Um, Andrew, you said your, your roommates are your friends. Um, that's really cool. I feel like that's a good situation. Yeah. It looks like, yes. I think go ahead. It looks like, Kabir, did you have something that you wanted to say that you didn't, um, that you, you didn't want to write down? Uh, yeah, for me, anyway, um, I got a uh, body that I see from uh, middle school years, years ago, and I do give um, arguments between Florida and my dad, and agree in uh, the screamings. Well, oh well, what can I do, even though I have uh, down to them and uh, this safety? that what do I say to people when they actually say, can you take five minutes out of your shoes? I don't know what to say. Yeah, are you saying that, so I heard first you kind of talked about bullying you experienced in middle school, but you said that you have gotten into more disagreements with your brother and your dad. Are you saying that they will like kind of ask you to take five minutes? Is that what you were saying about that, Kabir? I was five minutes oh, yeah. and my dad says, can you take five minutes? Mm. Your dad will take five minutes. And yes. Yeah. That's, I think that's a really good way to um, handle, like, that's, that's, a, that's what I do for myself when I have, um, when I get frustrated with people that I care about, especially if I don't want to say something, like, that I'll regret, I'll, like, take five minutes or 15 minutes to just kind of cool off. So, thanks for yeah. sharing that. Welcome to me. Different when I... Uh, I did that to them too when I take things um, completely different than other people. You know what down to them people do all the time. Mm. And I'm a three part leadership and a lot of the aesthetics. There are no more ways to do with other people. Thanks, Kabir. Yeah. I, I see that both Lizzie and Andrew are in the chat expressing a lot of frustration that we have to stay home and that there's so many restrictions. And I just wanted to acknowledge that I absolutely understand how frustrating it can be. And I, I think um, it's also really important to know that like 
they're not they're like that's like saving people's lives and so it's really like frustrating and hard but also like so important that like we all continue to like do our best to stay home and, and stay safe and um, keep each other healthy. Yeah, I, I just want to kind of repeat what Wesley said in my own words, because I think it's really important. Um, just that I think that there is so much, um, it's, it's like hard to overstate how um, much staying home can have like a bad effect on us. Like it's hard to um, it's, it's like hard. Yeah. It's hard to overstate how much all of us can really be like suffering because we don't get to see our friends or we don't get to do our activities. Um, but Wesley's absolutely right that it is like all of us are saving people's lives every single day that we stay home. And that's really important. And it's, um, yeah. And it, it shows like all of the science shows that it's working when we stay home and wear masks. Yeah. You know, we're getting some really good questions about this. I don't know if this is really the right time to get into this, but at some point I, we can absolutely have more of a conversation about how staying home saves, saves lives. Um, I you just know what? I just, I agree, Claire. And guys, I will send, um, we can send out a little bit more information in our follow-up email because I think it's important to really understand. So I'll send some more information out after our meeting. Thank you. Yeah, these are great questions. And I just, just because I'm a guest here, I don't want to take up the whole time talking about this, but these are great questions and I'm glad people are asking them. Yeah. Let's go on to the next slide. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Do we want to talk about this or do we want to move on to some of the internet stuff? Because we've got about five minutes. Mm, um, I don't know. Does it? Um... I would also say you guys are welcome to take some more time. I think it's great that we've been able to have some discussion as we go along. So um, I would say continue on with your presentation and don't worry too much about being finished right on time. Sounds good. Just uh, maybe give us like a like a five minute warning if you want us to like wrap it up. Sounds good. Um, Cool. So let's, yeah, let's talk a little bit about how, for the, for those of us who've been staying home and, and managing to get some alone time, how, how have you been able to do that? So like, Michelle, did you say you live by yourself? Yeah. So I live by myself too now. Um, but how are other people managing to get some privacy? Like one way that I've been able to get privacy in the past is by telling people that I live with that I need to be alone. So maybe if there's like a sign on my door that says, please don't disturb me, that's a way that I know that people will respect that sign and will not knock on my door and not talk to me. Has anyone, has anyone done anything like that? I see, so folks are talking about like wearing masks and staying, taking a walk outside. Oh, Amanda, that's such a great idea. Um, taking a walk is a really great way to, it's, it's kind of interesting because you're not like private. When you go outside, you're not getting privacy in the way that you could like take your clothes off, but you get privacy, be alone with your thoughts and stuff like that. So I think that's a great, that's a great example. Yeah. Does anybody here share a bedroom with other people? Okay, it kind of sounds like everybody here ha like has their own bedroom, which is really cool. That's awesome if you have your own bedroom. That's a way that you can make sure that you have your own space where nobody, uh, yeah, where that's like, that's just for you. Cool. I was gonna say one of the ways that I've been creating some privacy at home is like uh, the person I live with and I will take turns um, because we have a one bedroom. And so we'll be like, okay, now it's my turn to be in the bedroom. Now it's your turn to be in the bedroom. Um, so we can each have our own time to be alone if we want. Yeah, that's great. So if you're someone that um, shares a, a bedroom with other people, you can talk about having like whose turn it is to be in the bedroom or um, the bathroom is a private place. So if you wanted to like go do something private, um, you, can, you can hang out in the bathroom. Cool. It sounds like a lot of folks in the chat, like Christina and Andrew are saying they really like being around people, which is great. I'm, um, it's kind of interesting. Some of the people we work with love being alone most of the time. And some of the people we work with like almost never need their alone time, but usually like all of us have some times where we want to be alone. Um, 
and I think that even if most of the time we like being around people, it's still important to, to know where we can go if we do need to be alone, even if it's just to cool down because we're upset. Um, so yeah, I encourage everyone to spend some time thinking about where they can be alone if they need to be. Um, yeah. I, Kabir said this, um, someone, Amanda and Kabir are kind of on the same page about you can go outside and, and I, I also, a lot of people have talked about how wearing a mask kind of feels private, you know, because people can't see your face as much. Um, and so I, I think that's kind of another good point, Kabir, that not just being outside, but wearing a mask can kind of help you feel more, more private. Especially like when I wear a mask and sunglasses and feel like wearing a hat, it's like nobody can recognize you. Do you want to go to the next slide? Thanks. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit about privacy online. I feel like I wrote this slide thinking that there would be like a lot of parents in this meeting. So um, I'm gonna like change a little bit about how I talk about this. So basically, if like, if you're interacting with other people online, you can follow other people's public social media accounts, but you should not try and like, grab your like friends or your family members phone and like try and sneak onto their social media account and like read their private messages or their email without their permission that's not cool that's like a bad invasion of privacy um and it like makes it so that the other person can't trust you and if someone is reading your private messages or your emails or um stuff like that without your permission um that's not great. I would recommend like talking to them and, and telling them how it makes you feel. Um, for some people, um, it can be really confusing, all of the stuff that is going on online. And there are sometimes people who send you weird messages and it can be really helpful to have like a parent or caregiver who shares an account or who you share some of your like more private like emails or social media posts with or like messages with so that they can like help you make better decisions and help you understand what's going on. And that's great if you're okay with that, like do like that's a choice you get to make, but you should always get to make the choice about whether um, like parents or caregivers are looking at your like private email or your like private social media. Um, yeah. And like being online can provide a sense of privacy too. Um, so if you have like your own computer, or your own phone, or I know someone here has like a iPad um, or tablet, then those things can feel like a way that you can like watch something by yourself or read something by yourself um, or put on headphones and listen to music and be a little bit more alone, even when you're like in the same room with other people. All right. And we do have one parent um, that I can see. So if there are any key points from that slide yeah. that are more relevant to parents or. I feel like that's it. It's just like the framing is like, if your parents are doing this, like you should talk to them. And like, if you're a parent who's like spying on your child's social media, <laughs> like stop or like talk to them about it. <laughs> Tyler the one... moved his, his screen away. <laughs> okay. Does that, oh, it looks like Christina has a question, comment. Oh, you're muted still. You did. You got it. I like having parents in my life because I want them to know what's going on. And so I like to have them be in the loop because, and plus, yes, respect is everything and honor thy mother and father, of course. And, and so I love having them in my life. And so basically, how, how do you talk to people? How do you talk to people who have abilities that I, I don't know how to, how to explain this because I don't want to step on any toes. And so, so, so basically, what's the what is the difference between having your parents in your life when you want them in your life and totally. that they support you. Yeah. And so, so my question is, why are some athletes that do not want their parents involved? Yes. 
Um, so that's a really good question. And again, I'm, I, this is my second time saying this, but I'm glad that you're asking that. So Wesley and I are definitely not saying that your parents should not be like a part of your life and checked into social media with you. What we are saying is that it's, it's your choice. So you're saying, you said that you love your parents and you love for them to be a part of what's going on with your social media. And so you share that with them. And that's your choice and that works for you. And that's awesome. Other people just have different kinds of values or different relationships with their parents. And so some people, like I have, I am, um, I would, I would not like it if my mom looked at my Facebook without my permission. If she went on my computer and looked at my Facebook and my messages, that would make me really angry and that would make me really sad. Um, and that's my, those are my values about that. So for me, one of my rules is that people need to ask permission or before they use my stuff. Well, um, well, actually another thing that has been, um, uh, how about friends? Friends can like get into your phone and eavesdrop on you yeah. on telephone calls. So, yeah. so how do you? How do you tell them respectfully, please do not do that? That is the invasion of privacy. Why did you look through my text messages? I mean, parents, the reason why we have parents in our lives, it is because they want to know what's going on. They, number two, it's like, why is my kid feeling like, like this other person is invading somebody else's privacy. Friends can actually like say things that aren't nice either. Yeah. Um, so what I would say to answer your question is you actually like, how would you tell a friend that you don't like them going through your stuff? You did like, I would say exactly what you said. And I, I want to talk about the way you said it. You said like, please don't go through my things. That makes me feel disrespected. So I think the way you said that is really clear. It was very respectful. And it was, um, you, you used like a firm voice to let, your, to, to let them know that you're not okay with that. So I would actually say that like what you just did as an example is perfect. And that's exactly like how I would do that if I were you. And, and that's what I would tell my students. Um, but I do think that, yeah, you kind of bring up a good point. Same thing with friends shouldn't be going through our stuff either. I can tell Wesley wants to talk. Yeah, I was going to say, um, so like I'm autistic. So sometimes people like text me stuff and I don't understand what they mean. And I'm really confused and I feel like, what do I do? What do I say in this situation? So sometimes I will like show a friend and be like, Hey, can you look at these like five text messages? with me and help me figure out what to say and then that friend or like maybe my parents can help me with that but i'm not going to let them look at all my text messages they're just going to help me with the the things that i need help with um and so that's one way you can do it too where like most of your social media and your texting and stuff is private but then when you want help you can get that support from your family or your friends but what if family is your support system that's great yeah so, so just to kind of repeat what Wesley was saying, um, it's totally fine. Like if, if Wesley was saying, if he got a text message and he needed help kind of understanding what it was saying, he might ask his friends or if his parents were his support system, he might ask his parents to explain the text message. So that's a great resource, right? That your support system is there to, to help take care of you. We think it's really important that you get to choose who helps you with stuff like using the internet and using your phone. So it's just that it's your choice and you really like having your parents support you with that. And, and so that's great. But if you didn't want them supporting you with that, then they shouldn't, they shouldn't be helping you with that without your permission. Yeah. We're getting some like really great questions. I'm really glad that people are, are, um, yeah, are asking questions. Yeah. Can we move on to the next part? Yeah, so now we're going to talk a little bit more about the internet specifically. Okay, next slide. 
So first of all, I just wanted to like acknowledge that the internet is a lot of fun. Um, there are so many ways to connect with people online. Um, and there are like so many entertaining like things to do online. And that's like super normal to want to like seek joy and want enjoyment and want to be online if that's something that like makes you happy, right? Um, and I think that sometimes um, people, maybe like parents or maybe ourselves might think that like, oh, I'm spending too much time online. And if you feel that way, then like, that's okay. You can change how much time you're spending online. But I also feel like when we're all stuck in our homes and we're all staying home, it, there's a lot of things that we can't do that we would usually do that are really fun. So we might be doing more stuff on the computer or online than usual. And that like, try to be nice to yourself about it because you're missing out on a lot of the like, in-person events that you would normally like go to a physical space to do, but instead we're doing them like this on the computer. So if you're feeling like, hmm, I feel like I'm spending too much time online, um, you can always spend less time online, um, but also like try to be kind to yourself because it's, it's really normal to want to like have fun and participate in the things that are happening mm -hmm. on your computer. Okay, Claire, do you have anything to add? No, I think you did. Okay. So this is kind of like a follow-up question to that. So sometimes people ask Claire and I, like, what do I do if I'm spending too much online or time online? Or what do I do if my child is spending too much time online? And I think that that's like kind of not the right question to ask. I think a better question to ask is, why are you spending so much time online? So let's say you really love playing video games. It's your favorite thing to do. You've been playing video games like all day, every day. And your friends and family really miss hanging out with you because you've been on the computer so much. Um, and so maybe they're like, oh my gosh, like why, are you sp like why are you online all the time? And you're like, I'm playing video games, I'm having fun. So the question is, if you wanna hang out with them again and not just spend all your time playing video games, like. Why are you spending time online? And then what might you do instead? So maybe instead of playing video games by yourself, you could play video games with your friends. Maybe instead of playing video games, you could play board games with your friends that don't use the computer. Or maybe you could find some other sort of like fun activity that would be similar to playing video games, but um, would be just as fun and engaging and help you like wind down and de-stress and not think about like work or school or whatever is stressing you out. Claire, do you want to like rephrase that question? <laughs> sure. I was chatting something to Leah. Can you can you just say the can you say that again? I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I sometimes I get a little wordy. Um so yeah. I guess the question for everybody is like oh. if you feel like you're spending too much time online or if someone in your life is telling you you're spending too much time online, try and think about why you're spending time online mm -hmm. and whether you want to change that or not and then like what you might do instead. Yeah, so I feel like there's a few things to break down in there. So if you feel like you're spending too much time online, is that because someone told you that you're spending too much time online? Like maybe a parent or a therapist or someone else in your life maybe told you you're spending too much time online. Um, and then if it could be that you feel like you're spending too much time online because it's making you sad or it's making you upset. Sometimes I'll look at like Instagram for a while and I'll spend so much time looking at it that maybe it gives me a headache or maybe I spend so much time looking at it that I start to get jealous of all the people going on cool vacations that I'm not going on. And so sometimes it'll like make me sad or make me upset and I'll realize I need to put my phone down because I am not having fun anymore using the internet. So that's what I think the first part of what we're saying is if you're, if you feel like you're spending too much time online, like sort of, or is that coming from you, you feel that way or is someone telling you that? And then the second thing is what can you do if you feel like you're spending too much time online? Andrew said that you can take a break and go outside. Um, yeah, 
um, that's a great option. You can always like take a break and go pet your dog. Um, you can always do something else online. If you feel like you're spending too much time, like on Instagram, you could like go play a video game or watch a movie. Um, does anyone else have ideas on, on what you could do if you feel like you're spending too much time on the internet? How about Michelle? Do you want to give us some of your great ideas that I know you had before? Yeah. Um, my, some of my ideas are like you can, if you feel like you're having too much time online, you could go out and you could go find like a book to read or you could also like go out and find something enjoyable to do other than like online because you could also do crafts or you can watch a movie on your DVD player or you could find something that you enjoy or dance to music or something like that. That's all really good ideas of and good ways to, you know, be, and yeah. Great yeah. idea. I just want to say that Lizzie wrote in the chat that um, Lizzie used to have some nice computer games from the 1990s. And I just want to say that I also had some great computer games from the 1990s that like I can't play anymore because because the computer is like too old. So I just want to validate that. But that's Here's an and also if you have if you're spending too much time online, you can also set a timer too. Yeah, some people that works really well for some people. Other people setting a timer might like stress them out, but but so many people love like setting a timer for themselves. I think that's a great uh, that's a great idea, Michelle. I'll do that. Like if I need to like take a shower and I can't stop scrolling through my phone, I'll be like, okay, in ten minutes, I'm gonna get up and go take a shower. So I think that's a great a great idea. That's what I have to do too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. We only, we have about four, oh, Christina, go ahead. How about meditations, doing yoga, doing like projects in your own house? Or like if you're living with family members, like I have a brother and a sister and my parents, I'm the only one at home. And so basically I just enjoy everything. I love walking the dog, read a book, do projects, like clean up your room, things like that. Or, or maybe do something that you haven't done yet. Take yeah. on projects. I love that. I love especially like trying something new. Cool. So, okay, we have like three minutes left. So I'm gonna let Wesley talk for a couple minutes and then we'll, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, that sounds great. So I'm gonna summarize a bunch of stuff um, and we're gonna send out some resources after this talk that's gonna tell you more about it. Can you go back one slide actually? Yeah, so we're gonna talk a little bit about risk online um, and there's risk to everything we do, right? Like you, we are, we're all athletes here. And so like when you play sports, there's some risk. There's some risk you might like trip and fall and hurt yourself. And just like there's risk playing sports, there's risk on the internet, but sometimes it's harder to see. I know a couple people were saying in the chat that they've been hacked um, before and that like they've gotten a virus on their computer and it can be really hard to tell when that might happen to you. So, okay, now we can go forward. <laughs> um, I'm gonna just talk briefly about a couple different types of risk. You can go to the next slide. Yeah, so there are a bunch of different types of risks that, that are online. One of them is scams. So sometimes this looks like emails that are fake. Um, sometimes this can be someone making a fake like Facebook profile, uh, pop-up ads that are telling you like, you've won a million dollars. Usually not real, that's also a scam. Um, and then also, um, something called like bots, which is like sometimes on Twitter, people will like, like the people will make programs that like post a bunch of stuff that is like trying to get you to click a link to get a virus on your computer. Andrew's saying, yeah, don't look. So if you get something that seems like suspicious or weird in your email or on social media, if you get a message from someone you don't know, just like ignore it, don't click on anything. Um, the next thing is 
false information. So sometimes people lie online um, and there's a lot of ways that you can learn to identify some common lies that people tell online. Um, also, sometimes people are mean to you online, uh, like harassment is what that's called. If someone like keeps bothering you and they're bullying you over the internet, um, there are ways that you can report them to like social media companies or block them um, so that they can't interact with you anymore. You can go to the next slide. Awesome. And then there are two more things that I want to talk about that are a little bit more complicated and like really big. So one of them is extremism, which means like there are people in the world who believe things that are kind of, not kind of, that are very different than most of what people believe. So it's normal to have disagreements about things like your favorite food or even disagreements about like politics and who you want to be elected to office. But there are some things that you should not disagree on, like who, that like everybody should get to live. Um, those sorts of things are not things that you can disagree on, right? If you think that other people shouldn't live, that's a crime. And so people who are like extremists um, might try to convince you of some of those things online. Um, and um, it's important to learn how to look out for people who are trying to like um, teach you to hate other people. Um, hopefully, I feel like having talked to you all for a little bit, I hope that like you all seem quite kind and I, I don't think that you're like into um, something uh, like extreme like that or like hateful like that, but there are people like that on the internet and you should try and stay far away from them. Sometimes they say really mean things to you also. Um, yeah. Can I, can I uh, chime in and say one thing? Just yeah. that Lizzie commented kind of saying like a virus on a computer. And I feel like when I first learned about viruses, I had a very similar reaction, which is like, that sounds very silly. So I do just want to explain that a virus is um, like, it's kind of like the same as like the coronavirus, right? Where if we get coronavirus, it can make us very, very sick. If your computer gets a virus, it makes your computer sick. So your computer could break or your computer might not, like it might break and you can't fix it. Or a virus could get into your computer and like steal your information, like your, like your bank account information or your address or something. So it's, it's a, a way to think about a virus as like a sickness for a computer. And it's something we definitely, definitely want to avoid. Um, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, and then I'm just gonna read the last bit. So exploitation is when someone is like trying to take advantage of you or control you. Um, and so it's important to remember that when you're online, it's kind of like being in public, even though you might be in your house. So if you are like trying to get to know someone online, it's really important to make sure that they're not trying to take advantage of you or control you. Um, and some ways you can do that are to try and verify the person's identity, like make sure that they are who they say they are. Don't tell them too much personal information about yourself. And if you decide to meet up with someone, um, it should always be in a public place and you should probably bring a friend or a family member with you to make sure that you're safe. Um, and often like meeting up in a group is really helpful. And then if people are asking you for money online or if they're asking you for naked pictures, that's inappropriate um, and you should um, not respond to them or and like probably report them if they're making you uncomfortable. I think the bottom line to kind of wrap all of this up is if anyone is doing if anyone is talking to you on the internet and it is making you feel uncomfortable, you should tell someone. So um, Christina talked about how her parents are her support system. Whoever is your support person, that's the person that you wanna go to if someone's making you feel scared or if someone's making you feel uncomfortable. And it could be because they're talking to you or it could be because they said something that just like, like on like, just not even to you, but just said something in general that, that made you feel really uncomfortable, you should absolutely tell someone about that. Um, cool. Um, I just wanted to say that. I know we're out of time. I just wanted to say that because Andrew typed to stand up for yourself and you can stand up for yourself on the internet, but if things kind of get worse or things get scary, 
absolutely go, go tell someone. That's like really, really the number one thing to do. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Yeah, and have fun. The internet's not just scary, so. Thanks everybody. It was really great talking to you about the internet. If you wanna to talk to Claire and I about the internet or healthy relationships or other stuff, this is our contact information. You can call us or email us and we would love to talk with you more. And so as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna send out an email and I'll make sure I include Claire and Leslie's contact information. So if you guys have questions, you can reach out to them. Um, I will also include some other resources. Um, Wesley and Claire have some awesome information to go into more detail on some of the stuff that they shared today. And um, so I'll make sure that you guys have all of that if you have any other questions. And let's see, up on the slide here, um, we just have some of the information that Special Olympics has available. Um, for you guys. And this is um, some resources. Um, oh, this is resources in general. I'm sorry. So um, Social Olympics has some resources and that's um, through our health and family programs. And so I will send that over to you guys and the ARC information. Awesome. And we do have two different Facebook pages that I think probably a lot of you are already members on. Um, our sideline supporters, which is specifically for um, family members and siblings, um, people who are supporters of Special Olympics athletes. We post um, a lot of um, updates, especially things like these family health forums on that Facebook group. Um, and then our Stay Fit Challenge group, which is just full of uh, fun, health and wellness, uh, challenges and tips and tricks and stay tuned for something exciting coming in the fall on that page. We also wanted to let you know about an upcoming opportunity. Um, we're working with this amazing woman, um, Shaned Quinn, and she is offering a free um, self-care workshop for special needs moms this weekend at 10 a.m. on Saturday. Um, so perhaps you'd like to let your um, mother, your mother figure, figure, your caretaker, anyone in your life who you feel might benefit from this, we'd um, love, love for that opportunity to be extended to them. Great. And our um, next forum, we uh, will not be hosting one next month, but in October, we will be talking about the dual special needs plan, which is an opportunity available for people with disabilities to um, access additional insurance funds. Um, and so that one maybe sounds a little bit less exciting, but is also important to learn about. So we'll send you guys some more information if that sounds like it would be something interesting as well. Yeah. We have one more minute. Are there any Michelle, do you have any last thoughts or words of wisdom? Yeah, I was gonna um, say that if anybody needs, wants my information to like get any help with this at all, um, they can have my, uh, they can message me on Facebook and you, or you can awesome. give them, my, or you can give them my information too. So that if they want any help with this, they can certainly contact me to see if they need any help. Okay, I'll make sure to add contact information in the email. Thanks, Thanks Michelle. Michelle. You're yeah, welcome. And that was a, a really good example of giving consent to share your uh, personal information. So I think we really brought things full circle. Yep, we did. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you all so much. If anybody has any questions, you can send emails or phone calls. You'll know where to reach us. Cool. Have a great rest of your evening, everyone. Thank you Bye. so much. Bye, Bye Danny. Bye, everyone. Bye. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. See you next time, Leah. You're so, so missed it. Leah. Bye, Lizzie.